it's sweater weather is is, weather. is is a good thing to take advantage of. It's amazing. Okay, we're live on we're live on YouTube. You guys ready to go bring in the webinar? I bring in our folks. Born ready, buddy. Yeah. Are laugh. you ready? <laughs> How's your fake laugh? <laughs> I'm ready, bro. Here we go. Hey, welcome, 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 everybody, to a very special edition of the Not Your Average Investor Show. Today, we're doing a special session on how, as rental property investors, we can put ourselves in the path to progress. Not just the property, not just the team, but where can you find these places to invest that beyond the property line has the best dynamics for you to get wealthy off of it, to retire early, to increase cash flow, to increase equity, do all the beautiful things that real estate likes to do. And um, because of that, we had to bring in a very special guest. But right now, yes, we did. I am your host, Pablo Gonzalez. With me, as always, is the man that I affectionately like to call GC because he's got these like genius concepts, because he knows how to generate cash flow, because he's a great co-host, and because his name, coincidentally, is Greg Cohen. Say hello, Greg. Hello, everybody. Fantastic to be with you today. And with us in the house is our resident expert, our real estate celebrity. He is the... Um, the head of the Passive Income Club at Fortune Builders, which I know we got the Fortune Builders family in the house. Let me know in the chat that you're checking in here. Um, just a, a phenomenal gentleman with that's been part of over a billion dollars in real estate transactions. He is shockingly better looking in person than when you see him on Zoom. And you just have to experience that live. Uh, and we have created a a special residency for him here on the Not Travid Invest Show because he brings so much value all the time. We're still working on a custom-made Blazer Hall of Fame jacket for him, TBD, but he is Paul Shively. Say hello, Paul. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm a size 42 regular, just in case you guys didn't know, right? I, I'm very much looking forward to my... Uh, I, I'm well past the five-timers jacket like they have on SNL now, but I'm really excited. Um, and I love hanging out with you guys. One of the best, the best parts of my week in my month is the 10 minutes before this show where we jump on the phone and catch up and hang out. Uh, it's one of the best parts of my month. And I love being on here. I love being uh, part of the community and Greg, your community and then the Fortune Builders community. Any chance I can get to get in, get with them, help them out, be with my people who are you and everyone on the call. I love it. This is why I do what I do, man. Helping, helping people grow helping financial education, empowering people's purpose. I love it. Love it. Thank you for having me on. It is it is our pleasure, Paul. And, you know, speaking of this idea of crossing over communities, right, of similar core values, we all believe the same thing. We all believe that if you surround yourself with great people, you have access to experts that have done what you want to do, then we're all going to do better. And I want to welcome the Fortune Builders community. You're here in droves. I see 130 plus people already in the first four minutes. That means that we've got some new folks up in here. You're also going to meet our community here in the chat. Make a friend, introduce yourself, do all those things. But more than anything, we're doing our part by hosting on February 16th and 17th. We're hosting what's called the Not Your Average Investor Summit here in Jacksonville, Florida. It's going to be a two-day event where you get to come meet us, you get to meet the community. Um, and uh, there's some really, really special things that we're going to talk about on this summit. You see, you want to give them a little teaser about it? Man, I, I am so excited for this summit, especially now that we have the opportunity to uh, to get to talk to a lot of the Fortune Builders folks as well. For those who attend the show each week, uh, we've been talking about this summit. For, for those of you who are new, you know, if you haven't um, been a part of uh, meeting a, a team like JWB and the whole vertically integrated process that uh, we get to uh, get to do for clients. That's that's a huge win. Getting to go out there and, and meet the people who are actually hey, thank you, buddy. Yeah. It's my first time. Yeah. Uh, getting to meet the people who are who are helping you manage your financial portfolio in real estate. Shaking hands, uh, certainly an opportunity. There's a wonderful opportunity to meet the community. But I'm telling you guys, we're going to talk a lot about this investment opportunity that we see specifically because downtown Jacksonville um, is that next downtown that is about to pop. It's that downtown that is going to be revitalized. It's already happening. And if you start to look at some of the information and the, stat and the stats and the data behind what that means for an investment portfolio, 
it is truly shocking. Nobody really talks about it. So this investment strategy that we have is built on this revitalized downtown. This is an opportunity for you to come and see what it's like for a downtown that is going through this revitalization process and to see how you can benefit from it. Um, so, and we only do this once a year. Once a year. This is the third one that we've done. Many folks have come each and every single year. And those, you guys who have come every year, you're going to love what you see because a lot of those buildings that we talked about last year and the year before, and we said, watch, this is going to happen. Well, that's happened now. And we're going to be talking about the vision over the next two years, five years, 10 years. And again, how you can take advantage of it. So it is something that uh, I'm really, really excited to meet you all and for you to see the vision um, and the reality that's happening in downtown Jacksonville right now. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, go over to jwbsummit.com. Summit has two M's and one T. I learned that the hard way. I'm not the smartest guy in the room here. jwbsummit.com. And for our fortune builders, brethren, we have a special code for you, FB99. You get, you get a couple shekels off the top. <laughs> you, do, you get a couple of shekels off the top. Uh, yeah, it's $139 for tickets, but for our special friends at uh, Fortune Builders, use that promo code, do it before Feb excuse me, before January 14th, and it's only $99. And I don't know what the number of remaining tickets left is, but it's really small. Yeah. Uh, this event is only limited to 100 people. Last year it was 50. And uh, we said, well, we're going to still maintain that same amazing aura that we have at this event but we're limiting it to a hundred. That's a hard cap at a hundred. Mm -hmm. I think somewhere around 75 tickets are already sold. Oof, okay. So All I right. think there's somewhere like 65 yesterday. Yeah, I know. Right. And well, well then we finally start to send out an email to yeah. folks. Um, you know, so, so we'll talk a little bit more about it today, but if it's something that you want to do and you're interested in it, go ahead, go to jwbsummit.com, put that code in FB 99 and uh, pack your bags. We'll see you soon. And that being said, you're not just going to come meet us. You're going to come meet all these wonderful people that are here in the chat as well because we are packing it with them. And uh, we have a little tradition that we involve them in. Do you know what the name of that tradition is, Paul? I believe it is called Roll Call. Which the I Roll Call, baby! Which <laughs> you got it, man. We got, uh, we got the ringmaster in the house. Drew Barnhill. We got the MVP. You may have heard of him. Mr. Lee Bishop. We got the mama bear of the Not Your Average Investor community. Cody Adams. We got the maven of real estate from the mountains of Denver. Leslie Wilson. Well, so we got, uh, if you're checking in with your text, it just shows up at notyouraverageguest.com. Not so somebody from California checking in. We got Big Papa in the house. I love it when he calls him Big Papa. Pops, how are you, my man? Greg's dad, who's also coming to the summit. My parents coming to the summit as well. It's going to be a family affair. We got uh, our usual leadoff hitter batting six today. Mr. John Henning. We got the mountain man. Uh. <laughs> Billy Green. <laughs> Billy Green from the irrefragably polar vortexing mountains of Colorado. Billy, you got to stop twisting my tongue with these things. We got the early bird in the house who the first guy to buy the ticket. The very first person to buy this year's uh, summit ticket, Mr. Dean Curry. Living up to his name. We got the Shaw man. Nadim Shaw. Nadim Shaw. We got Stephen Chimilewski. Chim yeah, from Chim last Chim last, He's last show yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good Steven. to have you, Stephen. Welcome to the party. Welcome back, making it making it a habit. We got uh, the man formerly from Milipitas, now rocking and rocking. My favorite Steeler fan. My favorite Steeler fan. Louis Hudnall. Louis Hudnall. We got Dorian Green from Cleveland, Ohio. On your name, Hi. welcome, Dorian. Good to have you. We got our regulars, Gary and Rosalind Riley from Murrieta, California. We, we regard, regard you. Good to have you back in the house, uh, Vincent Barbarite back. From Long Island, this is making making it a making it a tradition. I think his his streak of attended shows is is getting to, double digits I'm gonna now. Have to come up to a nickname, I'm gonna have to come up with a nickname. Trisha Hoffman Aaron's from Omaha, Nebraska. Good Welcome, Trisha. We got uh, the mystery man in the house, Denny Davis. Denny Davis, good to have you. We got our favorite fee, oh, favorite favorite flat fee fiduciary based financial advisor friend in the house Kelly Barenbaum Kelly Barenbaum she's coming to the the show as well we got David Ludena with a yo yo you in the house good to have you David we got John Lopez saludos a todos saludos John Lopez good to have you here we got the better Greg Greg Stone Greg Stone from New Jersey uh we got Key Clark Lbert all right fortune builders Reggie Fonts or Fonse Love I don't know. That. I don't know if it's a fancy way of pronouncing it. Kimberly Andrews from Facebook, uh, from from Fortune Builders, <laughs> checking in. John Seckinger checking in. Good to have you. Dion Taylor, Anthony Williams, our favorite name to pronounce. Erin O'Neill into, into the, the light. light. She texted me yesterday. She's coming for sure. Who else is coming out here? Michael Hopwood, welcome to the show. Peter, sir, from the from the Great Commonwealth of Virginia, sir. Peter James. 
Tip of the, tip the, of the cap, cap to you, to you sir. sir. Tip of the cap. Uh, who else we got in here? Uh, Jeff Pettyjohn from Missouri, minus 22 degrees. <laughs> uh, we got not your average guest, Carolyn <laughs> from Houston out here. Who else we got? Ken, oh, the patriarch and matriarch of the first family of the Not Your Average Guest show, Ken and Carolyn Maline. We salute, we salute you. you. Good to have you in the house. We got uh, Doing Great, Lee. How about you? Oh, Bill Shields must have checked in here and I missed it before. Bill, I'm sure you came in with a great Spanish thing. Uh, JC in the house. All right, man. This is a record long. We're going to be here all day if I keep calling out all these names. Good to have you all. We make a tradition out of this on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have a community. If you like the feel of this show, we're educating you live here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and you're welcome back. But for right now, I want to kick it over to a uh, handsome gentleman staring right into the camera there. Paul, I know that. I A little birdie told me that JWB actually learned about real estate from fortune builders. And as I sit here and I look at this like 100 person company that is building out a downtown skyline in Jacksonville, I ask you, sir, is that a is that a regular result? Is that is that what you are you guys just churning out uh, city builders out there? Is that what's going on? You know, it's it's funny. I a fan called me the other day, right? And number one, that doesn't happen that often, right? So I was very honored. I was like, oh, fans call. Woo! Get excited, right? 15 years later with him, I still get excited when he calls me. He's like, what is is this email right? What is what is Greg doing? What's JWB doing? I'm like, dude, they're literally participating in rebuilding a downtown. He's like, when did they start doing that? And so, no, it is it is not very often. It is very rare. I mean, we have a tremendous community that does a really phenomenal job at kind of revitalizing neighborhoods, right? It's not very often where our students excel to the point. I mean, number one, Greg is in rarefied, stratified air. He is, he's not even, you know, he's be, he's graduated from a student, graduated to an entrepreneur, graduated to a business owner, graduated to being on, you know, Inc. 500. It's insane, the rarefied air you are in, my friend. So I'm honored to be here. But yeah, revitalizing an entire city, an entire downtown landscape, it's, it's insane, right? So I'm actually giddy to be on this show today because uh, I get to learn, right? Greg, you have surpassed us in so many ways in this particular area, something we've never done, right? At Fortune Bush, we've never tackled this. So I'm excited to learn. I'm excited to grow. I'm kind of excited to be a fly in the wall like everyone else on this particular show as well, too. It's exciting. You know, I think the incredible thing is that relationship that we have with fortune builders, which, go, which goes, you know, 15, 20 years now. Um, and I remember the first moment that I got to meet Dan, Paul, Conrad. I remember the first moment I got to meet you, Paul. Um, and from that moment until now, the best thing is that collectively, all of our organizations, right, everybody in fortune builders and mastery and here at JWB and us as investors as well, We've grown so much, but you know the other better thing about it, the best thing about it? We all haven't changed. Yeah. <laughs> we still give each other a hard time. We still call each other up um, and the good times. And then, you know, of course, to make fun of each other. And, you know, you just don't find that. You don't find relationships that stay 15, 20 years. You don't find relationships that have this much success, collective success. And even if you do, you don't find that those relationships at their core are still the same people uh, with that same love and respect. Um, so this whole relationship has been incredible. It's the best thing that ever happened to us in real estate. And today is, you know, is another step. Um, you know, I, I think sharing what we have been up to at JWB with the Fortune Builders community is a natural step. And we haven't had the opportunity to do that on a grand scale. And so I'm really excited about today. And then, of course, the summit as well. I'm I'm pretty excited myself. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, fellas, so if, if we're going to kick off this call, obviously there has to start with a love fest for the community and for each other because we are all here friends. Uh, but really what we're trying to figure out here is path to progress. You know, how do we how do we find that extra juice in our in our rental property portfolio? Make sure that we are doing the best we can with with the money that we have to grow more monies. So I know that. When we talk about rental property investing, I was just like many of the folks on this call today where I knew absolutely nothing about it four years ago. And then somebody gave me a microphone. I got to hang out with this guy a whole bunch of times. And now I know a little bit. And the little bit that I've learned is we talk about five profit centers. We talk about cash flow. We talk about debt pay down. We talk about tax payments, uh, tax benefits, tax savings. Uh, we like that better than tax, tax payments. Tax savings, tax savings. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We talk about that. We talk about inflation hedging. 
And then we talk about home price appreciation and what I have, what I've learned in my ability to interact with a lot of the dots on the ecosystem is that cash flow gets a lot of love, right? Like a, a lot, a lot of people come into this for the cash flow thing. It seems to be the value prop that most people sell and the value prop that most people are attracted to. But, you know, talking about home price appreciation, we found out through our journey doing the show is really massive, Paul. And I wonder kind of like what your journey has been on appreciating home price appreciation. That's, ooh, wow, such alliteration there. Wow, that, that was amazing. That was I, hope, I hope that didn't like get lost in the community right there. Appreciating home price appreciation. Let's just off the dome, man. That's why he's a pro, folks. That's why he's a pro. Um, yeah, it's it's very interesting. And we talked a little bit about this. And when I saw what you guys wanted to do for this show, I, I was like, yeah, absolutely, please. I love this show, particularly. Um, number one, because it, it has affected me personally a lot. It's affected my father personally a lot. Those of you who were at Ignite last year and saw me, even when we talked about today, but the presentation I did that I think is really important that a lot of people need to hear is the power of that profit center right? Appreciation and growth. And, and, you know, everyone focuses on current income and it's sexy and it's a topic and everyone likes to focus on it. And you're right. That's kind of what the industry standard was for a long time in focusing on cash flow, focusing on my current return to evaluate the deal. Is this a good deal or not? And I was there when I was first starting out year one, year two, year three, year four in my career, you know, decade plus ago, that's what I focused on. And even on our show that we've done on this show, right? We talked about that in previous shows a lot too, is, Hey, don't make the same mistake I did in my investing, right? And what's cool is I've been able to see in my arc and my growth and as I mature as an investor and as my dad matures as an investor, and he's actually retiring this year simply because, and I want to be clear, he's retiring this year simply because he's made strategic investments like with Greg that have appreciated over time. And that's where the overwhelming majority of the return for my portfolio, my father's portfolio, has been in the growth, has been in the appreciation. But what's cool is, and what I what I love about today, and why I'm personally really giddy to be kind of a fly on the wall for this call, is no one really unpacks that. No one really in our industry takes the time to educate on, well, how does home price appreciation actually happen, Right. And it's this kind of mysterious 500 foot level, very amorphous. Well, the economy grows and houses go out. You know, it's like no one takes the time and breaks down. Everyone breaks down cash flow. Everyone breaks down cash flow, right? We can sit here and break down cash flow and how things work because it's small numbers and it's very incremental and we can really nail it down. And it's an easy concept to grasp the ability to grasp why and how a market will grow in value over time is. It's a hard thing to understand, but when you do, when it clicks, it's like a big light bulb goes up and it's really, really fascinating, but it's super impactful in, in a portfolio, right? And that's why I'm excited for today's call to, to have Greg peel back some of those layers of that onion, kind of pull back the curtain, say, this is actually what happens. This is what's going to happen in Jacksonville particularly, but also here's how you can take advantage of it, which is the really cool part. Right. And that's how it kind of comes full circle. So that's why I'm really, really excited and why I appreciate appreciation, Mr. Bob. <laughs> well, I appreciate that take. Greg, in your famously short words, how does home price appreciation happen? <laughs> the the fortune builders audience may not know how. Oh, how, how. They, they don't know that you take a one minute thing and turn it into seven. I, I, okay. I am guilty of that. Um, probably will happen again. Um, but, you know, so there's so many misconceptions about how you actually build a successful rental property portfolio. And so I truly try to show and, and shed light on how you actually do this. But beyond the numbers, which I'll show you in just a second, just think about this. Like if we're taking a big pie and we're thinking, okay, how am I going to create the biggest pie? And you've got those five different profit centers. You would think that you would want to spend the most time analyzing and basing your decision on the biggest component of that pie, right? If 60, 80% of your overall wealth pie is going to be generated by one of those profit centers, you probably want to spend all that time there, or 60 to 80% of your time at least, 
right? But what many people do is they spend the vast majority of their time, 80, 90, 99% of their time focusing on the thing that's going to drive the smallest amount of wealth after a full market cycle. And so that's why I'm so passionate about unlocking why I appreciate appreciation, why you should appreciate appreciation, and why you should factor this in. This should be a big part of how you make your decision to invest in real estate. And it's not just because home values went over up over the last few years because of COVID. The data that we'll go through and we can talk through is spanning four decades of time because what you really... I was going to say really gain an appreciation for it. I'll kind of I'll limit, I'm limit that for a little bit now. What you really start to realize is that you can count on home price appreciation if you're in the game long enough. Many people believe I can't count on it. I don't know when it's going to happen and whatnot, but that's not what the data shows. That's not what the experience is. You know, and I get to manage $1.3 billion of real estate assets. And I have done that for 18 years. So, And I have all this data that I get to look at all the time. And if you keep coming back to the show, we get to show this data over and over again. And so all of this data says that home price appreciation is predictable over a given period of time, over a long period of time. And if you know that, then that's actually what's going to drive the majority of your return on investment when we're sitting here in 10 years and looking back at your portfolio. That's how... It's going to land just like it's landing for you, Paul, and that's how it's landing for your dad, and that's how it lands for so many JWB clients. Got it. So do you want to... With all that being said, I don't think I talked at all about how home price appreciation yeah, have, yeah, actually happened. I, I was like, remember, remember when I asked that question? I that? <laughs> well, so there we go. All right, let's talk a little bit about home price appreciation, how it happens, right? So home prices appreciate based on supply and demand. And the supply side of the equation, right? How many houses are in inventory? So we, we have a good metric there because we understand how many listings are on the multiple listing service, right? So we understand the supply side. The demand side is largely driven by population growth. And so if you're thinking about places that are going to lend themselves to above average home price appreciation over the long haul, think of those cities and think of those states, think of those regions where people are moving to. Where are people moving to right now? Uh, warmer climates. Yeah. Uh, so, Tax-free climates. If you st th thought of a state that started with F, which state would you think people are moving to? Florida. Florida. <laughs> a lot of people are moving to Florida. Yeah. There you go, right? I mean, it's been this way even before the COVID, uh, you know, in migration in the state of Florida. Uh, you know, Jacksonville specifically is the fifth fastest MSA. That's the fifth fastest region for population growth. And that was even before COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you want to look at places where you're going to be able to see significantly higher home price appreciation, the easiest thing is to look for where people are moving to. Look where population has been growing consistently consistently over a decade or more, um, because those dynamics where population has been growing for that long probably are there to stay. And it's probably going to lead to additional population growth over the next decade or two or three, which will lead to higher home price appreciation. Yeah. And for, for me, the the moment that home price appreciation really started making sense to me, it was when we started incorporating the investor, the guest investor segment on this show, where we would bring in somebody that's been investing with JWB for a while. And you do that extra mile of uh, breaking down their portfolio and where all their profit centers come from. And we started developing this like pie chart for everybody that started showing the four different profit centers over and over again. And we started calling it the Pac-Man because we started seeing this trend. And the trend, I'm going to illustrate it right here. If you're watching right now, um, it looks a lot like this, right? You'll see you'll see this pie where, Greg, this is blue. Greg's also colorblind if you're new here. Uh, this is blue. This is the rental income part of it, right? Then there's the tax saving component. Then there's the principal pay down component over here. Um, and then, you know, we're starting to really average out this idea that, 60, you know, more than two thirds, right? Like here it's 68.7% of the actual wealth that gets created. The percentage of the total return comes from this home price appreciation piece. And as we started showing this over and over again, it looked like this, you know, it, it really didn't matter if somebody had invested in 2019, in 2016, in 2012, in that like wonderful time to invest, we call 2007, uh, you know, like pre pre home, you know, pre pre housing crisis, we just kept on seeing this like Pac-Man that would appear 
because the majority of the pie was the body of the Pac-Man and all the other profit centers was just the mouth. So that's when we really started keying in on this conversation and really starting to illustrate it, um, which I think started really coming true for us because it's been a long time that we talked about this idea that Jacksonville has the highest home price appreciation average um, in yeah. in these positive rental, you know, cash flow markets, right? So like you get the cash flow, but you're also optimizing for home price appreciation. So showing that giant chunk was what people really started clamoring over and why people started seeing that. Paul, have you have you seen these kind of like have you tuned into past shows where we've had this like pie chart here or or, or have you guys ever broken it out that way? Yeah, I mean, one of the great things I love um is I, I get those emails like I'm sure a lot of you do where you get your portfolio return ROI. You know, I, I forget exactly what it's called. Client ROI report, I believe. Very good, report. Paul. Very good. And I actually look at mine, right? Because you do my work for me. I mean, I analyze all my own investments and my own deals that I have bought with JWB and all over the course, you know, the country over time. But I love those emails because it does a lot of the work for me, right? And I just have to double check it. And that's where it really hit home to me as well, too. It's where it hit home to my dad. And it's it's the same thing is, is you make the mistake of buying just off cash flow right? Which I did when I was young as well too. Now I don't make that mistake anymore. Everyone here isn't going to make that mistake anymore, right? Because we're, they're part of this community and have this education. And that's what's cool is you see, wow, this is where the rubber meets the road. Yes, we understand it, but can, you know, now it's this is exactly how it works. Houses grow over value. We're going to go into it today, but it's happened in my portfolio, my dad's portfolio. That's specifically why he's able to retire this year, right? Because yes, he got the cash flow, right? But what's cool is he built a little mini portfolio, Right. And now he's able to retire off of that portfolio, reap that appreciation reward and say goodbye to his day job. Right. It's huge. It's a huge piece of the puzzle. Absolutely. Can you unpack puzzle. that, Paul? Why is it that it's home price appreciation that is the reason why he can retire? It's where the big dollars are, right? It's where the Pac Man is. Like you said, it's where the big dollars are. The cash flow provides that month in, month out stability or extra income or the ability to have that quality of life or time ownership or whatever it is you're looking for in the here and now. But when you're, when you're doing your financial planning and you're doing your investment objectives and you're looking at the future plans, when you're allowing yourself that five, 10, 15 year window, right? And that's when you're, when your time frame for your investment objectives is that, which it should be for most people, a five, 10, 15 year window, at least, right? The overwhelming, where, where just the math shows, is the largest dollars to help you hit those goals are the value increase combined with your principal pay down. It's a one-two punch that you know cash flow just really can't beat. Even when you're buying at 07, 08 prices and we're getting crazy cash flows that just aren't today in the economy, that's just not there. That's fine. Even then, right? Even those returns still get dwarfed by the dollars that are created by home price appreciation and principal pay down. So I'm taking my dad's portfolio and he's like, hey, I'm a dentist. I want him to retire. I'm sick and tired. He's getting some arthritis in his hands. How do I do this? And I look at his portfolio and I said, well, we've created this large chunk of cash, you know, cash, right? We can do a lot of things with this because we bought smart and it's grown over time. He had no idea he even had the amount of money he had. He had no idea his homes were even worth what they're worth, right? He had no idea because it was that silent thing that you don't really focus on, right? And that, that's the cool part. He's actually able to retire off of that because of decisions he made three years ago, five years ago, eight years ago, seven years ago. And that's the power is if you make decisions now, right, and you let the program work for you five, seven, eight, 10, 15 years from now, whatever those objectives are, they're going to be a lot easier to hit because you're investing in that path of progress, right? Yeah. And I, and I, I think a lot of us that have been in this thing for a while, right? Like when I say us, I mean my friends that are here in the chat and Greg, I've been investing for three years, but a lot of, a lot of the the folks that I see that have done very well with real estate and have this, you know, this philosophy of don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait and have really benefited from this kind of stuff. It's very, it seems more tangible to them. And when I talk to folks that are newer at this, they're like, well, that's great for your dad who bought in 2011. But right. you know, what about the next 20? That's great that Jacksonville has been doing this for 15 years. But what about the next 20 years? And, and, you know, that kind of like begs the question of today's show, right? Like, it's like, yeah, cool. Once we've captured all this demand, and all this stuff is happening, how do you generate demand in inside a market, right? Like, how do you actually get a city to attract more people so that there's more folks that want the houses 
um, that drive that thing up is, is what we're going to talk about. Yes, we are. Shall we go there now? Shall we go there? You ready, Paul? You got any other, any other questions there? We shall. We should and we shall. Shall we will? Whatever. We should and we shall. <laughs> All right, GC. I think, I think first, before we talk about how you did it, let's just talk about why you did it, right? Like this research that you've done on downtown. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always, I'm the, I'm kind of the reverse engineering type, right? If I know an outcome that I want to create, I look back and I say, well, how can I influence? What actions can I take? What can I do on behalf of my clients to make sure that they are at that outcome? And so again, if we follow along here and we understand that the greatest contributor to your wealth in real estate will come from home price appreciation over a full market cycle. If we know that that's the biggest driver, what is the biggest lever I can pull so that I can create more home price appreciation in a market? Is that even possible as an individual investor, as a company? Is it, is it possible to actually influence home price appreciation? And for most investors, the answer is no. For most companies, the answer is no. But JWB is different. We've been here. We put our, our flag here in Jacksonville 18 years ago when we started. And we said that we wanted to go a mile deeper here than going a mile wider and going elsewhere. And we put all of our efforts, uh, our team is here, and we're going to be here for the long haul. And so as we knew that factor, and then we also knew that home price appreciation is the biggest driver for our clients long term, we said, what can we do that other companies might not have the ability to do? And um, we said, well, what can we do? Well, so then I went to the data. So let's 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 uh, let's fire up the data a little bit because I'll I'll walk you through what the data shows. Fire right, this data. Let's go. So we know all of that. Well, let's look at what the data shows. I put some data up here that's showing revitalized downtown cities and what their home price appreciation has been over the last ten years compared to the U.S. overall. And what we have seen is that revitalized downtown cities appreciated 27% more than the U.S. overall in the last 10 years. So think of cities like Denver, Austin, Nashville, Tampa. If you look there, you've seen over a quarter percent more home price appreciation. And what does that mean for you as an investor? When you see this type of additional home price appreciation, it equates into hundreds of thousands of dollars of additional dollars in your pocket over a period of time. It might be five years, 10 years, 15 years, but we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars of additional return on one property. So think about it. an average JWB client might buy three properties or five properties or get to maybe 10 or 15 in their portfolio over time. We're talking about million dollar impacts that we can have for our clients. If we could be that company that can move downtown forward and become a revitalized downtown like Denver, like Austin, Nashville, Tampa. Got it. Uh, Charles C. Baldwin is asking, where are you pulling this data from? What's the primary source? Yes, yeah, so we pay consultants for this data. Uh, so our consulting firm is John Burns Real Estate Consulting. So that's where all this data comes from. Cool. All right. So let's talk about downtown Jacksonville, you see. So then I'm saying, okay, well, we can rally all of our efforts for downtown. We can actually be a part of this revitalization. We can be a pioneer. We can push it forward. We know the outcome. We know what will happen if we can drive home price appreciation. Well, the good thing is that we're not starting from scratch. So if you actually look at leading indicators for what the next downtown to pop off might be, you would look at a couple of leading indicators. One might be how much are the residents of downtown actually growing even before we get involved, right? How much of that downtown growth? Because for a downtown to become thriving and to become revitalized, you have to have more people living downtown. And to be quite honest, Jacksonville has 1.6 million people it wasn't that long ago that we only had, call it 3,500, 4,000, 5,000 people living downtown. I mean, that is insane that you don't have more than that in a city that has 1.6 million people. Um, so it has been this untapped resource. But what we're seeing here is that even before the early pioneers of downtown revitalization, because there's many more than just JWB were a part of it, even before we all got involved, we already saw downtown populations growing. Right, Just in the last five years, we've seen downtown populations grow. We, in 2017, we started at 4,800 residents. And now in 2024, we're going to be over 10,000 residents. And that 10,000 number is really significant because not only do we focus on what we can do in Jacksonville here, but we're very connected with 
um, leadership councils here Jackson, in Jacksonville. We go and we see other successful downtowns and we follow the model of how they became revitalized. So we've been to Denver, Austin, Tampa, Nashville. We've seen there. And what you find out is that once your resident population in downtown reaches a tipping point and that number is 10,000 residents, you start to see more bars, more restaurants, more grocery stores, more amenities, and you create this flywheel effect. So 10,000 is actually a very significant number, and we're there in 2024 here in Jacksonville. Yeah, I remember, I remember the first time that we had, when we first started the show in 2020, um, was it Daniel Daniel Davis? He came mm -hmm. up, he, and he threw out that number. Right? That's right. He was, the, he was the head of the Chamber of Commerce, and he was like, it's really huge that we get to this ten thousand dollar number because that ten thousand ten thousand resident number. There you go. Because at ten thousand residents inside of an urban core, it tips, and the reason why it tips is because at ten thousand residents now developers, retailers, and everybody else that funds the development of downtown, they no longer need extra incentive. They see a certain density, and now. You know, whoever wants to develop a mixed use residential building can count on calling up Whole Foods and them wanting some, you know, to be a to be a cornerstone tenant in that in that development, calling up a, a movie theater and they want to like pop in. Right. All these services that require that density now foot the bill for the developers to develop once you reach that number. And I remember talking to him about how, you know, we're at 6,100 and that's been such a high growth from like 4,800 just a couple of years ago. And we were there forever. And now seeing this thing really starting to accelerate um, to, to like beyond 7,000 and having this horizon of 10,000 in the next 12 months to me is really exciting after being on that conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, you think about residents already growing. That means there's already demand for living downtown, even before all these developers are getting here. Well, that's wonderful. But then let's think about the dollars that are actually being used to develop. And this was the moment, hopefully this is a moment for you where it's like, okay, now I see what is going on here. And it'll be really fun for you to see a lot of these actual developments when you come to the summit. But let's look at that, the dollars that are actually being developed. So in Jacksonville, you can see all the way back from 2017 through 2021, um, you know, we are number, excuse me, through 2022, which is the last data we have available. Our numbers of development dollars have gone up significantly. That's $4 billion of investment activity that's in active construction in downtown Jacksonville right now. The dirt is moving. This, the, is, not, this is not a rendering. That's right. The dirt is moving, right? Downtown Jacksonville is 3.9 square miles. So it's, you got $4 billion of stuff going on here. And this is not just like uh, proposed activity. This is the dirt is moving. The buildings are actually being renovated or new buildings are going up. That's why this is such an exciting time to come and see what's going on here. But $4 billion. And just to put that in perspective, I look at other downtowns. I haven't found another downtown that has $4 billion of activity going on. Um, I was in Washington, D.C. not too long ago, our nation's capital, a wonderful, thriving downtown. They have $1 billion of activity yeah. going on, yeah. a super successful downtown. Yeah. Um, so $4 billion, of course, that's the most in Jacksonville history. And you're seeing that for years now, that number has significantly increased. And that's why there's more housing units now for people to be living downtown. And that's why, of course, um, our population has been growing even before our impact here. Okay. All right. Um, you know, what's interesting to me, GC, is the fact that, you know, you can you can identify all this data all you want and you can be in a great city all you want. But unless the downtown hasn't already reached that critical capacity, what, I, what I'm getting from that one billion dollars in D.C. is that you need to be in a place that it hasn't already happened yet. Yes. in order to like benefit from this tipping point kind of thing. Yes. And that is kind of like what's come together. It's the idea that it hasn't happened yet and it's on the way there that we find ourselves in this moment where we know we're in a before and that there's going to be an after, right? Like it's easy to like know of a before and after moment in, in, in the rears. But right now with this data, with you guys being so boots on the ground and with a couple of projects that we're going to showcase that are already happening right now, we know that we're in the before we're presently in the before. So now that allows us as not the average investor to capitalize on the opportunity of seeing into the future. A hundred percent. And it, you know, 10 years ago when we were talking about downtown Jacksonville, it was a tougher, 
uh, help, a tougher thing for people to see the vision and see when it would it could happen. There's a lot of variables along the way. It's much easier now when you see the building, when you see what's actually happened. You see completed buildings. You see residents living in completed buildings that those buildings were vacant for 30 years before that happened. So it's a much easier thing for people to visualize now. But what people don't realize is, uh, you know, when this pops, when this happens, it happens really quickly. Mm -hmm. And home prices go up in the neighborhoods surrounding downtown and rents go up in the neighborhoods surrounding downtown very quickly. If you look at those cities like we talked about, Nashville, right? Is anybody, for anybody who's in the audience right now and lives in Nashville or is a, is, is a frequent visitor of Nashville, talk about what rents and home prices were like around downtown Nashville 10 years ago versus what they are now or five years ago or two years ago, right? It happens really quickly. And that's because once you hit this tipping point, a lot of developer dollars start coming in. A lot more developer dollars start coming in and it became, becomes this um, flywheel effect. So there is an urgency to be at this special moment, which you have right now, where you don't have to be a visionary to see what's going on, but you are in early enough before it's really starts to, that flywheel effect starts to happen. So that's the moment that we're in right now. Yeah, we, I, I kind of equate it to like buying Apple stock right when they released the iPod. Yeah. Right. Like the iPhone hasn't come out yet. The iPad hasn't come out yet. Yeah. Right. It's not yet a trillion dollar company. That's good. But, but you see, you see the launch of the first thing and it's happening. And, you know, we keep talking about like having to visualize this. You don't have to visualize this. If you want to come see this before and see how, uh, how much it feels, you can come to the summit, jwbsummit.com, put in FB99 as the code, and you can come see it for yourself. But what we are essentially predicting, or at least what, what, what you're predicting, are, oh, I, just, I just highlighted the wrong thing here. Sorry about that. <laughs> what you're essentially predicting here is that we're going to follow suit. You just, you just tease this idea of who would have liked to have invested in Nashville. Right. Like, would we like to follow suit of Nashville? And this is the data you came up with. Yeah. So part of this is I want people to see that where Nashville was back in the day mm -hmm. is not so different than where we were back in the day. Yeah. Nashville just got their stuff together. Right. Public partner, public private partnerships started to happen. Incentives for developers downtown started to happen in Nashville and in Denver and in Tampa. Um, and over the course of, geez, a few years, five years, you've seen significant growth. Um, but it's not that it's like it's not like this unrealized uh, this uh, this dream that can never be realized. So let's go back and look at the data. So as of 2013 in downtown Nashville, you had 4,658 people living in downtown Nashville. You had 3,800. We were about at the same level. Now, since then, Nashville popped. All of these things that I'm talking about happening in Jacksonville right now happen in Jacksonville call or happened in Nashville call it 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Now there's 17,000 people living in downtown Nashville. And Jacksonville at the as of 2023, we're at about 7,700. So growth from where we were, but we haven't popped yet. But you can see the model for how to do it has already been out there when you look at other successful downtowns. Got it. Paul, you got anything in Nashville, man? I wish I did. Like most people on the call are probably saying, I wish I did. Right. And it's, and what I love about this, just to add my quick color commentary, we talk about it, you know, I steal it from Andy Tanner, right? How do you, don't you wish you were able to predict the future, right? Don't, don't we all wish we could predict the future? Well, we can, this is how we do it, right? It's supply and demand economics and it's taking the time to look at the data and see where the data concludes. What, what, where's it? leave you and the data doesn't lie right and that's what's cool it's this isn't a like you said greg this isn't pie in the sky this isn't visionary talk this is let's just look at the data let's look at the numbers and let's draw logical conclusions that are factual of where this is going and this is how you predict the future which is really really cool i thought you'd never ask why don't we look at the numbers and see where this is going <laughs> So this is great. So then let's look at what actually happened in Nashville. Um, and I broke it down from 1982 to 2012 versus the last 10 years, because that's when it really popped. So if you look at home price appreciation in Nashville compared to the U.S., it was largely the same. It was 3.8% in Nashville for those 30 years, and it was 3.5% for the U.S. overall. So there was nothing that was significant there. But look what's happened since 2013 to 2022, 
right? The spread, right? 25% ish more home price appreciation in Nashville than the national average has happened over the last 10 years. And the change agent, the path of progress has been that revitalized downtown for Nashville. There isn't a, we talk about the path of progress. Many people have maybe heard that before. They're thinking of the next supermarket or shopping center to go in next to their home. None of that, all of that pales in comparison to investing in single family rental properties surrounding a downtown that is about to go off. That dwarfs every other supermarket, shopping center, all of that. So if you're looking for the path of progress, if you can find that next downtown, that next Nashville, that's where you want to hold these beautiful single family rental properties. Yeah. And and, and again, I've, I've skipped a couple of slides here, but we have a bunch of data here of all these other of all these other cities that we all wish we could have invested in 10 years ago, right? Like Austin has done a very similar thing. They've had greater home price appreciation with similar kind of like numbers. Um, that's Nashville. And now what we're seeing in downtown Jacksonville is very parallel to these like growth numbers that are happening in an urban core. And and we're talking about the urban core specifically because there's a not your average guest is saying, I'm in Huntsville, Alabama, development going up everywhere really fast. What's your view? I'm not sure exactly what's happening in Huntsville, Alabama, but not all development is the same, right? Like multifamily units going up around all over the city is very different than a clustered urban core that is that is dense, that has mixed use, um, and that will attract the generation of like talent that Fortune 500 companies need to hire from. And that's what we're seeing happening. It's generational in Jacksonville. What is going on in downtown Jacksonville is once in a generation. That's why we're so excited about it. Um, I can't speak to, to, to Huntsville and to many other cities right now, but this is not just that next complex that's going up or that next shopping center. This is going to change how Jacksonville is as a downtown, as a region for decades and decades and decades. That's what we're on the precipice of. Got it. And we're going to show some projects right now. But Jerry Rodriguez is asking, is there an opportunity for those starting out in real estate in the downtown area? I think what we're what we are trying to point you to is this idea that home price appreciation in Jacksonville is the, the curve is about to bend, right? Like once this happens, now is when this city is going to start outpacing everything. So um, that downtown area, you want to talk about the difference between investing in downtown and investing in workforce housing? Yes, absolutely. So what I am really focused on is the best risk adjusted return on investment for my clients. And that word risk adjusted, those words is really important, right? For an investor to go into downtown and start to, to uh, invest, I was going to say, take down one of these projects. Pablo's helped me there. Um, you know, a developer talk is take down a project. But when for, it, for, for somebody, for an everyday investor to go into downtown and to buy and renovate a building that's been vacant for 30 years, you'd have to put tens of millions of dollars into that investment. It's a lot of risk. Uh, and the rewards are really slow and low. <laughs> they are low in the beginning. They're, the returns are low in the beginning. It's a big payoff many, many years down the line. It's, it's not the best risk-adjusted return on investment to be investing in downtown. So... What I show people is the best way for everyday investors, you, me, everybody, to take advantage of an opportunity like a revitalized downtown, buy single family rental properties right around that downtown because those single family rental properties mitigate risk. They mitigate risk because you have enough cash flow coming in to offset the expenses, right? They still get the benefits of the overall rent price appreciation and the home price appreciation that you get because downtown is growing and revitalizing, but you don't have to take the risk and you don't have to shell out millions of dollars to get it. Um, so the investment opportunity that we're talking about is building that portfolio of single family rental properties in the neighborhoods that we have been serving for 18 years here in Jacksonville, which will indirectly benefit from everything we're talking about with downtown's growth. How does JWB fit into that equation? How does JWB fit into that equation? Well, this is what we have been doing for 18 years. We um, have been able to build, you know, portfolios for clients. Jeez, it's, it's $1.3 billion of cl uh, client portfolios we get to manage. We break that down. That's over 3,000 rental properties. And it's all here in Jacksonville in these beautiful neighborhoods that are right around downtown Jacksonville. 
Um, so this has been a very coordinated effort for JWB for 18 years and especially over the last three to five years to be able to impact client returns positively through our efforts of investing in downtown. So JWB invests a lot of our own money in downtown, but this isn't an advocate. We're not advocating for you to do the same, right? You got to have really deep pockets. You got to have a really high risk tolerance. Your best bet is to be able to buy those assets. And JWB is your vertically integrated provider who makes it really easy for you. Right, You can move a chunk of money into your single family rental property portfolio managed by JWB, and you get the benefit of everything we're talking about here as far as the downtown growth that's happening with Jacksonville. We've got a, we've got a saying that uh, actually someone told me about eight months ago, which was really interesting. That's really applicable right now. And he's talking about how there's millions of dollars to be made for the average investor on the margins, Right. So he calls it millions on the margins, right? What he means by that is if you pay attention over any economic inflection point, any time an economy is about to go up, go down, anything changes, there's an inflection point, like we're talking about at Jacksonville right now. And there's an inflection point. If you pay attention to what the big dollars are doing, right? And you invest your dollars on the margins of that and the periphery of that, Right. Very frankly, I can't compete as an individual, Paul Shively. I can't compete with Blackstone, right? One of the largest REITs in the world, right? But guess what? We buy deals for Blackstone. We invest in the same areas that Blackstone invests. I pay attention to what they're doing and I make similar moves, right? You know, Blackstone, but what was it? Seven bill, seven and a half billion dollars of single family homes in 2021, 2022, right? Mm -hmm. So pay attention to that. They're doing the same thing. Why? Well, okay, we can we can pick off and you know take down like Greg talks about invest in right. We can do the same things. We can make the same moves, but we can do it kind of in our own lane, right? I'm an individual investor. I'm Paul Shively. I have my own personal net worth. I'm not worth hundreds of billions of dollars like some of these big giant developers, are, right? So what can I do? How do I take advantage of this? Exactly like Greg said, you invest in the margin. You invest in the peripheries. You're smart about where the path of progress is going, and you. It's not a demeaning thing at all. I love being on the margin. I love being there, right? Because these big boys get to do all the heavy lifting for me, right? And I get to make a safe, secure, solid investment, have all the economics we've all talked about on this show forever, right? And I get paid from day one from the cash flow. It helps offset my expenses like you talk about. I don't have to make an investment and wait to get paid for three and five and eight years like some of these developers do, right? That's high risk, high reward. That's not how my dad built wealth. It's not how my dad's able to retire, high risk, high reward. It's not how I'm a fan of investing personally, right? I'm more of a, I'll hit doubles and singles. And in 10 years, I'm very happy with my doubles and singles that have grown over time, right? I stack my rentals. So that's what we're talking about. And that's what's nice is you can predict the future, see what the big boys are doing, see the economy, see the data that Greg's talking about, and then how do we apply it, which is what I talked about at the beginning, which is I love that you asked that question, Greg, and you're talking about it, uh, Pablo. Is, well, what do we do? How do we, how do we fit into this picture? Right? How do we take advantage of this? And you start to be intelligent about where we put our dollars, which I love. Yeah, I like to describe it as I like going to Vegas and I like to gamble. And there's the Bellagio VIP room where there's like a thousand dollar bet table. And then there's like the downtown casino where I can pay my like $10 bet table. <laughs> um, when I see this type of stuff happening, I feel like I get to you know, I, I get to come to the VIP thousand dollar bet table where all like the sharps are and, and I get to put my little $10 bet next to the thousand dollar bet of, of the smartest guys in the room. Right. Because I'm just buying a single family home. I was just telling you, I just closed on my fourth and fifth door in my portfolio here in Jacksonville of just single family home, right? Like three bedroom house, two bedroom house, uh, th three bedroom house, four bedroom houses, um, that type of stuff all in these neighborhoods. But I know that, you know, the, the people that are going to move into my homes are the folks that are going to be working at the companies <laughs> that are coming and moving here because this downtown is, is, is really popping off. So like, I just see it as Follow the money, like you said. For me, I like to use that. Like put that, put your put your chip next to where the sharp guy is, is is putting the chip and yeah. right the way. Following that example, and you know what it'd be more like though, rather than Bellagio versus the downtown casino and the and the yeah. the chip next to him, it would be like if the downtown downtown casino not only allowed you to put five dollar bets out there, 
but they also had much better odds too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. This is not gambling. This is this is that's, a, like, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Is like that thousand yeah. dollar bet that's gonna hit or not hit. You put your five dollar, ten dollar bet to yeah. it with hey, you know you're gonna get a solid return whether it hits or not. You know yeah. you're gonna get you know your steady consistent income off that bet and it's got a potential to really hit big as well too right it's like that guy's taking all the risk for you you put your bet next to it and you know the economics are like well this is absolutely i'm going to get paid for this bet no matter what yeah you get to be the casino at the thousand yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, all right cool i i I get that (laughs) for all of our our almost starts talking about gambling and greg and i get real uncomfortable in case i I like to gamble i like to gamble (laughs) didn't pick up on that <laughs> yeah 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 um do you guys paul do you have do you guys want to jam on anything else do we want to show some of the some of the folks some of these like projects that are happening and what we're talking about about like different projects i mean i'm personally racking my brain i'm like all right how much money can i pull together to pick up some more rental properties this year so yeah i mean i i'm well, let's talk about that i'm loving this right because this is this is cool and it's very real it's very it's very rare that you get real world talk about path of progress and what's happening Personally, I'm super curious. Um, I'd love to see some of the projects that are going on um, because it's rare you get this type of insight. This is usually like you talk about, Greg. It's it's developers. It's a small country clubby type community that doesn't really share what's going on, right? Um, and it's usually very distanced from the average investor like me and like you. So I I love love this stuff. So yes, please, please. Show cool. Me. Let's let's take a look at that. Before that, you know, I think we've talked about a lot of like highfalutin concepts. I'm going to break it down real simple for like people like me. Um, and it's the idea that we are painting a picture of a city that is about to increase its home price appreciation rate. And once everybody finds out about it, then it becomes like a giant rat race competitive thing of like putting in bids as things are going up. And it makes it much harder to acquire the amount of assets that you want to acquire. So what we are saying right now is that JWB as a vertically integrated rental property provider Um, is essentially telling everybody this and getting as loud as possible here in this room before the media starts running with this, before there's like a run on this. And you're able to buy that home that, you know, 10 years ago was $70,000 and now is $170,000. You get to buy that $170,000 home now before it's a $500,000 home in 10 years. Um, And everybody's going to be like, oh, you're so smart. How'd you know? And you're like, well, you know, I was just in the right room. So, so, you know, we're encouraging you to come to the summit so that you can like touch and feel and see like how special all this stuff is and meet us and do all that stuff. And, 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 you know, like know that you can trust everybody here involved uh, beyond the track record and all the other folks that are, that, that, that are vetting us here. But if what you really want to do is go put your chip, you know, with the casino on the table, go to, go to chat with JWB.com. If you have like these like real questions about, you know, how much do I need in my portfolio? What do I need to do? You know, like I'm looking at, building a 10 property portfolio over the next 10 years. Should I start now? Should I do something else? Right? Like that is chat with JWB.com, pick out a call, talk to the team, start getting to know them. And then if you want to come to the summit, I think it'd be uh, the next logical step as well, or the other way around, whatever you want to do. I want to hang out with you. So I'm not going to tell you not to come, but uh, let's talk about some of these developments. Here we go. Love it. You know, um, this is going to be fun to show you guys, but, uh, you know, as we're walking down the streets together on, uh, when we, when, uh, you're all here for the summit, but this is a big picture overview. This $4 billion is not just one major development. All of these smaller pictures here are major developments that are going on in downtown Jacksonville right now. So I'm going to pick just a few, just to give you kind of a, a taste of what, uh, the, the in crowd here, the developer in crowd here in Jacksonville knows, um, and, and some of the ones that are a little bit more noteworthy. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at the Jacksonville shipyards and four seasons hotel. Anybody heard of the Jacksonville Jaguars? Yes. 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 They're not in the playoffs this year. Um, <laughs> the epic collapse, but their, uh, their owner is Shad Khan who's one of the richest men in, uh, in the world. And, uh, it's really nice having a billionaire who not only just cares about his franchise, but cares about redeveloping downtown surrounding his uh, surrounding the stadium and his franchise. He sees the bigger picture. Um, so the Jacksonville shipyards is right next to the stadium. And um, we are now through Shad's connections and through his investment, we will have our first Four Seasons Hotel. Uh, there's going to be a beautiful marina that you can see from the rendering. And this is actually going on right now in downtown Jacksonville. This is not proposed. 
This is uh, over a $300 million development, 25 acres in downtown Jacksonville. It's already approved, currently under construction. So you can see dirt moving um, when you come here uh, for the summit here. Got it. And what you want to look for in all these things, it's mixed use, right? Like that is what drives economic development. You're seeing, you're going to see hotels, you're going to see education, which we're about to highlight right now. You're going to see not just residences, but like these projects that actually, um, bring in economic development. Absolutely. And and I know we're getting close to the hour here. So I did want to make sure everybody had that uh, URL. Go to jwbsummit.com. Uh, the code again is FB99 for some of the folks that joined a little bit later. I think we only have about 25 tickets left. There's only 100 spots that we have um, for our summit. And uh, we started talking about it with our community a few weeks ago, and they snatched up most of them. So this is something you'd like to come and see in person. Uh, we would love to have you, but you've got to go ahead and sign up soon. So go to jwbsummit.com. Um, the next one to talk about is the UF, University of Florida, graduate downtown Jacksonville campus. This is so big, yeah. and most people don't know anything about this. Yeah. Um, there is not a larger incubator of talent than bringing a university like the University of Florida to a downtown like Jacksonville and having it focus on some of the highest paying industries, FinTech, health tech, engineering, this graduate and research institute is going to be incubating that talent, which brings more and more companies to want to come and occupy downtown Jacksonville, which creates this flywheel effect because we have better paying jobs, which creates a rise in median incomes, which supports home price appreciation and rent price appreciation. You're seeing this flywheel. Well, the UF graduate downtown campus is coming. Um, it has, the funding is already there. Uh, it's already been approved by our city council. We have local, uh, we have state, and we have um, county money that is going to support this. JWB is supporting this. I don't know if we mentioned this, but JWB is a donor for oh, this. Yeah. yeah, we donated a million dollars to be a part of this. To me, this is this is the one that excites me the most because having come from Miami, having seen a downtown pop in a city become unaffordable, you know, like and 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 just in just home price appreciation go through the roof. I remember in the early 2010s, we were working on economic development in Miami, and we're like, we really want to attract tech talent, you know, like tech companies down to Miami, make it Silicon Beach, all these different things. And the biggest roadblock in the way was we don't have a world-class institution to provide the the um, the companies that we're trying to recruit with the cheap labor and the idea that University of Florida which has produced some really great results for a couple of fellows here who go Gators both, who both went there go Gators um recently got rated the number one public institution in America by the Wall Street Journal no big deal and they are opening up a graduate campus that focuses on healthcare tech fintech and it's powered by the world's biggest AI supercomputer that is owned by the University of Florida. You're talking about fin fintech, healthcare tech, AI. Happening. <laughs> that's, and it that's must be happening. in downtown Jacksonville. It's in the yeah. charter. Yeah. Um, so that's coming. Um, super, super excited about that. And then, oh, by the way, the thing that most people probably know, if even if you're not here in Jacksonville, is the Jacksonville Jaguar Stadium renovation. Yeah. It it became viral when they released the renderings for the stadium renovation. It is going to be the stadium of the future. A proposed two billion dollar development, one point four billion dollars of that being the stadium and. Um, you know, the change remaining, the $600 million being the uh, development of the neighborhood surrounding the stadium. But just look at that beautiful thing that uh, that they're proposing. This is one that has a little bit more work to do to cross the finish line. We're having a very big vote here in Jacksonville sometime Q1, Q2 to get this approved. Um, all signs are looking good for uh for the city to approve the incentive package that would be required to do this. But this locks the Jack Jacksonville Jaguars here um, for Jacksonville for a long time and is a huge economic driver for downtown. Uh, right along Raj, my uh, right along partner at the last summer, is saying that NVIDIA's CEO is a UF graduate. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. There you go. All right, cool. Talk about powering AI. All right. Um, okay, so this is Church Street Federal Reserve Building, do you see? Yeah, so this is uh, – JWB has 
invested $68 million in downtown Jacksonville over the last three years. Uh, so this is not just me saying, hey, listen, go do this. This is me saying, go do this. And I'm putting my money where my mouth is. This is something that we have actively been a pioneer in downtown Jacksonville because we believe so much in this and because we see the good it can do for all of our clients and the community. Um, so our first two major renovations are 218 Church Street and the Federal Reserve buildings. These are renderings. When you come and be a part of the summit, we're going to walk. We're going to walk right by these. We're going to have a happy hour right next to one of these. Some people are staying at them. Some people are staying at them. Yes, it's mixed use. There's residential. Yeah. Um, and, and these are completed. They are fully completed, um, generating income and uh, wonderful uh, amenities for our downtown. All right. This is the one that I find really impressive, GC. This is the pearl of the downtown the walking tour, if, you, if yeah. you will, right? Um, and I, we don't have enough time to talk about how we, uh, you know, uh, everything that we were a part of in order to set up the Gateway Project. Can but, I do it in 30 seconds? Yeah, go for it. JWB did a nationwide search to find other people that have created a downtown resurgence. They looked all over the country. They found this one gentleman, actually better looking than Paul Shively, that has been part of the downtown renaissance of Tampa, has been part of the uh, Amazon HQ2 project in Washington, D.C., and he had another big one under his notch, yeah. recruited him to be the CEO of a public-private partnership development company called Gateway Jacks and has raised, uh, in combination with a couple of other people, uh, what is it, an $800 million fund, $400 million fund? It will be a $2 billion oh, dollar I'm investment. sorry, a $2 billion dollar fund that is going to pay for essentially a whole neighborhood of development that we're now about to describe. Go ahead, Jesse. That's right. And we're going to walk you through that downtown and, uh, excuse me, that development. Now, this has already been approved by the city uh, for the incentive package. The money is there. The developer is there. We're expecting to start in 2024. This is going to be a $500 million dollar phase one of the mixed uh, or of the development. It's going to be mixed use. It's going to have um, a thousand residential units over nearly a, a hundred thousand square feet of retail space. And guys, we're going to be walking through downtown holding up like VR uh, iPads where you're going to get to see a vacant piece of land, hold that iPad up and see, okay, wow, there's going to be this mm -hmm. seven story, this 22 story building. Um, a walkthrough plaza, like a promenade, yeah. a hotel. I mean, you're like underselling this thing, dude. I am, you know, I can't possibly uh, do a good enough job. You got to see it in person, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this is going to start in 2024. So all of these things are happening. This is only a small segment of, of the $4 billion of active construction. But when you come down and you get to actually see this and you walk the streets with me and my team, you're going to see this vision and you're going to be blown away. Um, this is the thing that not many people know about, uh, but this is the thing that can really change your life, your financial portfolio and your life by investing wisely, especially over the next full market cycle. What do you think, Paul? You impressed? I'm going to count my shekels and see how many properties I can buy this year. I like it. I like it. Well, we've uh, we're a little bit over time here. We got some Q and A. I think we can have uh, we can get back to folks with the Q and A. GC, or do you want to run through it real quick? You know, I, I, listen, I, I'm I'm here. We're all here. Let's let's do rapid fire. Try to answer those questions for folks if possible. Um, but if you if you've got to go, we appreciate you spending the time with us. We hope you come and spend more time with us as well. Um, and we certainly hope you keep coming back to the show. So why don't we say bid adieu to those that have to leave and stick stick around for the ones who need to stay. Adieu. <laughs> and that we're going to do. Paul, do you have any questions or anything right off the bat, or should we just jump right into this Q&A? Uh, if the team wants to, or if someone wants to chat with your team, Greg, right? Hey, they want to actually take action, specifically like the Fortune Builders folks. I know they're big action takers. Hey, how do I take advantage of some of these in my portfolio, these single family homes around these areas? Uh, chat with JWB.com, Greg, is that right? Yeah, that's easy. You can actually schedule a time for you to have an appointment with our team if you go to chat with JWB.com. If it's easier, just send an email. Just send an email to info at jwbcompanies.com. Reach out. We'll, um, we'll, we'll, we can't wait to meet you. Love it. All right. Well, we got the first question from the better Greg, Greg Stone. As single family property owners, what are the downtown investment opportunities available to us? Yeah, well, I think we kind of, I know Greg asked this question early on. Um, so I think we kind of hit that, right? 
the best risk adjusted returns based on knowing this information is to invest in the solid tried true method of investing, which we've championed for 18 years, which is investing in single family rental properties, which is what allowed Paul's dad to retire early. Um, but knowing the downtown effect here, just invest in those. Let us put you in the right spot so you could take advantage, not just of this great asset class, but also the incoming additional home price appreciation that we expect because of the revitalization of downtown. Mystery man, Denny Davis says, Paul, Greg, and Pablo, these shows with the three of you together are always some of the best. Agreed, Denny. Quick question regarding cash flow. 2011 to 2014 was a near unprecedented time to invest all over the country and especially in Jack's, specifically for cash flow with only 20 to 25% down. My sense is we'll never get back to that kind of environment, which is why we need to take all five profit centers into account. Am I off base here? Well, so Denny is one of our longtime clients and uh, he, to give credit where credit is due, he was the uh, the champion of last year as far as attending Not Your Average That's Investor shows. So if there's a, there's a gentleman out there who knows this stuff, certainly Denny, and we appreciate your, your, uh, your impact on the community, Denny. You know, the question is, are we ever going to see a time where we see that level of cash flow um, with putting 20 or 25% down? You know, those that was a special moment, but I've learned a lot, a lot of never saying never. We were just having this conversation this morning. Yeah, yeah. you know, so I, I won't say never. Um, when you talk about the impact of a downtown here, we're expecting to see significant rises in rent price appreciation, home price appreciation over the years. A lot of, you know, the cash flow effect is dependent on what interest rates do. And if I've learned anything... I don't know what interest rates are going to do many, many years in the future. Nobody would have predicted a pandemic and, and then, you know, the age of easy money there. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's never going to happen again. But I think the bigger thing is like, what's the best time to invest? You know, for fans of the show here, you've heard me talk about the best times to invest all along the way. And it's been for different reasons, mm -hmm. you know, in the COVID environment, especially after we got over the, the shock of COVID. It was the low interest rates. It was the deal is the debt. And that's why that was such a really important time for you to be able to take action. Well, this whole downtown thing was way in its infancy three years ago. And now this is fully developed. So now what we're talking about, the best time to invest is right now. And Denny is a great example because Denny just put a, I don't know what number property it was for you, Denny. I know it's over 10. Um, another asset under in your portfolio because you're seeing um, you know, what we're seeing here. So I think the bigger thing is there's, there's moments in time where there's an opportunity for you to take action and significantly benefit from it. Downtown happens to be the one right now. Cool. Paul, we got a question from you from uh, Jeopardy Queen, Margaret Smith. She's asking, is your dad getting enough cash flow for use in retirement? What income on how many properties would you say? Uh, yeah, so my dad's number uh, in cash flow uh, was right around like $8,500 a month that he wanted to be able to retire right? And kind of take every expenses, be able to take my mom out to dinners. My dad likes to play golf, be able to afford a, you know, a small country club membership for him. Like he loves golf. Like, you know, that, that was his number. Right. And we were able to get him to that number um, while still taking advantage of the home price appreciation. Right. So it was, it was the nice double whammy. And this is why I like the investing in the margin. Like we talked about the periphery, the workforce housing, everything Greg and Pablo was talking about is exactly true. It's like, we didn't invest for my father, for the home runs, we didn't invest in the development deals. We invested in the income producing assets that we all been talking about for years and years and years that do both, right? They do produce that income. They do produce that 80, for him, it was about $8,500 a month from his portfolio that he wanted to be able to, that was kind of his number they needed to get to and passive income as well as have the appreciation, right? Um, and that's why it kind of ties back to the last question as well too, if I can take 35 more seconds. Yeah. You know, Andy Tanner talks about, um, you know, there's, there's two sides of a coin, right? Well, no, there's three sides to the coin, right? There's heads and tails. And then there's the middle, there's the, the edge. When you talk about the last question of like, well, we're ever going to see this again. Well, real estate cyclical, like you talked about, Greg, the ability to predict the future is sometimes out of our hands because we don't know what interest rates are going to do. Maybe banks start to take interest rate loans and say, hey, instead of a 30 year fix, let's add 10 years onto it because everyone can't afford it. That changes the game completely. Like who knows? We don't know this is going to happen. So is cash flow going to come back potentially and be an overwhelming part of the return Pac-Man like we talked about? Maybe. I don't know. But the ability and the knowledge 
to invest in both sides of the coin. If it's a cash flow heavy market, how do you do that? If it's an appreciation heavy market, how do you do that? How do you take advantage of both? And that's living on the coin or investing with the knowledge that you can take advantage of both sides. It's that third side. It's you, you are on the edge. I can do both. When the economy presents me this opportunity, how do I take advantage of it? COVID, interest rates are super low. Cash flow is higher. How do I take advantage of that? Boom, that's a great asset. We have a potential inflection point with an economy in Jacksonville where it's about to take off and really grow. How do you take advantage of that? That's investing with the knowledge like that analogy is, well, that's that third side of the coin that most people don't ever think about. That's the knowledge to be able to do both, right? Well said, brother. Right. Well said. Uh, Joni Shaw has a question that I think we get a lot, which is why I'm going to ask it real quick. I know you were big on buy and hold. I'm getting up there in age at 59. Will I still benefit? What do you say about that, Paul? God, I, I hope I hope your health is in good order. So you're not going to, you know, unfortunately not be able to enjoy life for another 20 or 30 years. But I truly, sincerely, 100% with every fiber of my being, believe that, yes, you can absolutely take advantage of this, right? Um, I've seen it with my father. I've seen it with hundreds of clients. Um, I get text messages every single day from clients and investors in our community who started when they were 60 and 65 and 70, right? Because does the plan change the older you get? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we talked about, like the edge, right? Like, hey, your plan you need to be able to be educated enough, be around communities like this, Fortune Builders and JWB, to have the knowledge how to invest with what the economy is giving me, right? Like we just talked about, but also adapt your own personal investment plan to fit you, to fit your time horizons and your goals, right? So your goals may be more cash flow focused for whatever reason, because you want to leave your job in two years. Maybe you're still working. I don't know, right? Well, we've got to solve that as well as solve the other issue for the next 20, 30 years. You know, God willing, you're in good health. I, I would love that, right? Absolutely. So you want to adapt your plan and your specific investment strategy to you, right? And that's why chatwithjwb.com is so important. That's why getting in calls like this is so important. Get on a call with one of Greg's teams and they can take this, get your personal, individual, unique situation, your financial situation, Marry that up with all the education we're talking about, and boom, now you have something that's custom to you, right? Because my plan looks different than Greg's plan, looks different than Pablo's plan. That's cool. That's good. That's how it should be because I've got different things I want to do with my life than other people, and, that, and that's good. It's unique to every person, which is what I love about this community, right? You get to empower your purpose. It's your purpose, not my purpose, not Greg's purpose. It's your purpose, right? Empowering that through the financial education, that's, that's why we do what we do. I love it. I'll just add on that, you know, we get this question a lot. Is it, is it too late for me? Um, what I remind people is no matter what age you are, you know, if you're asking that question, that means you have dollars that you're investing somewhere. You know, <laughs> it's not like you just stop investing once you get to a certain age. So look at where you're putting your dollars and see if those are, is that truly the best choice for you to be putting your dollars there on a risk adjusted return basis? Or should you consider an alternative? And for many, many folks, they are way over invested in the traditional asset classes. Real estate doesn't have a seat at the table for them. And so, um, and that really doesn't have a bearing on what age you are. You know, it's, it's about making the best decision, very much what Paul is saying as far as being defined on your goals. But just realize that at every, every day right now, you're making a decision to put your money somewhere. It might not be serving you the best. Um, so uh, that's why a call with a team of professionals can really help you. Love it. And I love the chat lighting up with a bunch of people that started in their 50s, 60s, and 70s, right? And love I know Ken Molina already that. left, but um, but he started in his 80s. So I, it definitely works. And I got two pieces of good news for you guys. What's that? Joni's in good health and coming to the summit. Yes. <laughs> love Fantastic. It. Well, love you'll it. get to meet a lot of folks yeah, there. Yeah, it's going to be great, Joni. Can't wait to meet you. April Smith wants to love know, it. what's the ultimate goal of the summit, GC? What's your answer to that, pal? You know, I think there's multiple goals, right? Number one, it's to be able to meet the clients that we get to serve. 
And we don't get this opportunity all that often. Many folks, you know, invest with us, never actually get to come and meet us in person. They live in California, in New York, they live overseas. They don't get to actually come to Jacksonville. Um, and, and especially for those who are thinking about making a decision, the ability to shake somebody's hand, get to look them in the eye and meet the team that's serving you, I think is priority number one. Uh, number two, the priority is for our community to grow. And this has grown year over year. This is now the third summit for us and our community overall um, is a very special, special thing. Um, and so this summit is a, is a celebration of our community. So you get to meet all the folks uh, as a part of the Not Your Average Investor community. The third opportunity is for you all to see the investment opportunity and make decisions to invest as well. If you are thinking about building a rental property portfolio, what better time than when you are there on site, surrounded by the team, you get to ask the questions you need to, um, you get to actually see the properties to invest in, as well as the downtown that we're talking about here. This is the best time for you to make the decision to invest. Um, so that's really what this this um, the summit's going to be about. It's going to be a fantastic time, and we hope you see you there. Awesome. Um, a question here from Luis Santos Zanelli saying, Who's the property manager and what are their current numbers? GC, this is an easy one for you to answer. Fantastic. I'm the property manager. <laughs> JWB is vertically integrated, which means we have all of the services packaged for you. It's all under one roof. There's one phone number to call. Um, and happy to go through all of the returns with you and property management costs and fees, as well as all the other fees and costs you need to be aware of before you're making an investment decision. Happy to go through all that with you. Just reach out to the team. Emails info at jwbcompanies.com or go to chat with jwb.com. A little love for you, Paul, from another Luis. Luis Olivares says, Paul and the Fortune Builders family changed my life. I now own 33 doors and enjoy a very nice monthly cash flow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations, man, Luis. Man, I love awesome. that. That's why I do. That's why I still do this, man. I love that. Right? Yeah. You can, if every show, every day, we get one more person on that path, right? Just one more person to help change their trajectory, their family's financial future. I love that. Please. I love those text messages. I love those chats. That's why we do what we do. I love it. Love it. All right. Rio Patil says, what zip codes in Jacksonville does JWB invest in the most? There's four main neighborhoods. Uh, there's the West side, South side, Arlington, and the North side. Uh, the zip codes are a little bit more plentiful than me just to rattle off right now. Reach out to the team. Happy to share all the zip codes that we, um, that we invest in or continue to show up on the show. Uh, because a lot of the times we're showing actual investments that people are investing in right now. And you'll start to see the zip codes that people are investing in. Love that. Uh, Mystery Man Denny Davis says, gentlemen, this is, oh, he's talking about the downtown scenario. This is by definition a thriving 18 hour city by 2030 with 18K population, correct? Do you want to explain what that means? Yeah, exactly. If you start to look at other successful downtowns like Austin and you look at, they, they actually produce a state of downtown report which I go and I look at all of these models that we're following, Austin has achieved, and the, the title of their state of downtown report is Austin, an 18-hour city. Mm. And they have made that transition to an 18-hour city. What that means is an 18-hour city means people stay after work and they go to eat and they go to bars and they go to restaurants and they go to shows. And it's an 18-hour city. And Jacksonville right now is a 12-hour city. And we are moving towards that 18 hour city. Um, so when you can be there, when it's a 12 hour city, before it becomes an 18 hour city, that represents a huge opportunity for return on investment for you. And we're simply following the model that's worked in Austin, Nashville, Denver, Tampa. It's, it's not rocket science. It's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's in the process. Love it. Love, uh, Technical question from Jerry Rodriguez from you, real estate expert fellas. What does my income need to be so I can buy a quadplex with an FHA loan? Great question. You know, I'll just, you know, it depends, right? We need to be able to have an individual conversation with you on that one, Jerry. So again, encourage you to reach out to my team. We'll help you the best that we can. Um, but I think you would probably expect, we, we got to find out income. We got to find out expenses. We got to put you in, in touch with lenders. So um, go to info at jwbcompanies.com. And yeah. and last question here. For, sorry, Paul, you were good there. No, I just you know the technical answer because you want to, if if he wants a super technical answer is is income's only one piece of that puzzle. Exactly like Greg said, we need other pieces of the puzzle to be able to answer because it's debt to income ratio, super important, right? So, you know, you're you're asking a doctor to perform brain surgery without getting an X ray first of what the brain looks like. We need we need to know. We got to know a lot more.
We got to cut into that brain. All right. Glenn Schenken says, will JWB offer the opportunity to invest through you on these bigger projects ever, G? You know, Glenn, it really doesn't follow in line with what we are here to do, which is to create the best risk-adjusted returns for you. Um, JWB is the pioneer that has put our tens of millions of dollars in these projects. But I'll tell you, I'm in the financial meetings every single month when I'm looking at how these projects are doing. There's a lot of money going out the door on these projects. There ain't a whole lot of money coming back in. And I'm not going to take you along for the ride as an investor because that does not suit you. That does not suit our ideal client. We are here to provide passive investments that help you sleep well at night and that are consistent and that produce uh, cash flow and that also produce upside. So um, short answer is no. I don't expect you to be able to invest alongside with JWB because quite frankly, I don't think you'd want to. <laughs> when you see the return projections in the short run, they're not great. Um, there is clearly a bigger reason why JWB is making the decision to invest in downtown much more than short-term returns. Short-term returns aren't even on the table for us, uh, but for our clients, typically short-term returns are important and mitigating risk is important. That's not what downtown is. So no. Okay. Boys, fellas. An hour and a half today, 190 plus. I wouldn't be surprised if we broke the 200 barrier on just like people here throughout it. But we had over 190 people at once. We never, ever, ever take it for granted that you take an hour, an hour 10, an hour 20, an hour and a half out of the middle of your workday on a Thursday to come spend time with us. And uh, that also tells me that I also don't take for granted Paul Shively star power. Paul, thank you so much for being here, man. Hanging out here, uh, flipping the script, and letting uh, letting GC take the take the reins on this presentation. Your curiosity, your stories, your know how, your good looking face—it all adds to all of this uh, all of this experience, man. So we love having you, man. We got to get you that jacket. Just saying. Love being here, man. Feel at home every time I'm with you guys. Thank you. Love you, man. It's uh, This has been especially fun because this story matches so well with your journey, with your dad's journey and putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, so appreciate everything as far as uh, what you've meant to this show, for sure. But I appreciate your friendship much more than that, brother. Always good to hang out with you. Amen. Love you guys. Love the community. Good to, good to be here. Thank you. All right. If you are new here today, don't forget, we do this on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You are now registered, so you'll get invites. You can pop in whenever you like the show, whenever you like the topic. If you just want to keep the conversation with your friends here happening. Uh, hope to see you on Tuesday. But from here to now, we always leave the show with one little piece of advice. What is it, GC? Don't, Don't be, be 